Welcome to Back on the Broomstick, a modern witch's spoken word grimoire, where two witchy friends from way back are reconnecting to their pagan roots after a long period of mundanity. We're rewalking the path of the wise and trying out all the latest spells, rituals, and magical theory in today's witchcraft and pagan practices. So grab your wand and your incense, your cauldron and your crystals, and join us as we get Back back on on the Broomstick. Broomstick. Hi, and welcome to Back on the Broomstick. Today, we'll be talking about all things Beltane. So if you missed our last episode, Beltane is May 1st, the cross-quarter holiday on the Celtic Wheel of the Year. It happens on the midpoint between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. It's traditionally the Irish festival of the first day of summer, and it is celebrated today as the very pinnacle of spring. I, for one, am super stoked because... Shell has promised a blast from the past. She has cracked open our old coven Book of Shadows back in the Circle Amarat days to our ritual of Beltane for the year 2000. I am so excited to see what she has found and to hear all the things that we did for Beltane back in the day. Anxiously anticipating some tidbits here, I'm Layla. And the keeper of all things old and decrepit in Books of Shadows, I'm (laughs) Shell. And I would like to initially point out, Layla, what the holy hell here. Do you realize that we did Beltane 2000 like 24 years ago? Obviously, I can do the math between 2000 (laughs) and 2024, but like mind blown, it's been 24 freaking years. You pointed out when we recorded the episode before this about Beltane history and lore, you had pointed out that next year will be the 25th anniversary. Mind blown. Yeah. We were so proud of ourselves. I mean, we had done some big rituals, but this Beltane was a major ritual in our community that was attended by large numbers of people. And every year it just got bigger and bigger. So it was quite a responsibility, and we felt very important and grown up and like our coven had finally made it. And, you know, we we talk about a lot of different magic and and ritual type stuff. And I thought, what better way to celebrate Beltane than cracking this bad boy out and telling the people what we did for Beltane 2000. So, you know, we are going to talk about magic and we are going to talk about ritual, but we're going to talk about a specific ritual that we did oh so long ago. And I am so very grateful, as usual, that you kept all of our documentation. You were the keeper of all that knowledge because I think between people moving and me having the flood, I don't know how many copies of this still exist. I am anal retentive about keeping this shit. Like (laughs) I have it in tubbies so that, you know, no matter where I go in the world, it ain't getting damaged. It ain't getting ruined. And treasure trove. I'm telling you, treasure trove. Now, we were pretty anal even back in the day. So I know we took lots of notes. We had spreadsheets of costs. We had lists. I still have them. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. We had lists of what we needed to do, what we needed to bring. And of course, there was the big ritual. For us, for our coven, the two things that we really liked to do when putting on a community ritual was one, something called a passion play. We liked to make it visually interesting. We wanted to do a, not exactly a skit, but we wanted the ritual to almost be a skit representing the holiday and the themes of the holiday. Cut to the chase. We liked drama, okay? I think we thought we were like Hollywood actors or some shit. Well, that too. But the second thing we really liked to do was to get the people involved. And I think that was a big part of why we liked the big dramatic acts, because it was much more visually fun and interesting than just kind of going to the ritual and seeing some people, I call West, water, I call North. You know, if you have kind of an act... I guess it's like your English teacher used to say, it's better to show than to tell, right? We wanted to show people what was going on to help them get in the mood better. Well, we were also from a very eclectic community, all kind of different belief systems, deity worship, etc. So I liked the Passion Play because it kind of gave you the backstory, you know, who is the Holly King? Well, you could tell me or you could do a little Passion Play that I'm not going to forget, you know, the whole... We we kind of brought all of that into context via our passion plays. Yes. And when I remember, when I think back to the Beltane ritual that we did, 
we chose the theme of the triple goddess. We started out with the triple goddess. And I remember when we started, you were the maiden with the white cloak. And I was the crone with the black cloak. One of our coven mates had the red cloak for the mother. And so we came out as these aspects of the triple goddess. But because the season's changing and the cycle was turning, we did something, I don't remember what, and took our cloaks off. And exchanged them. I went from the crone to the maiden. You went from the maiden to the mother. And the coven mate went from mother to crone. So underneath we had dresses that were different color. And I I remember being annoyed because I had an infant and a toddler. And I remember being annoyed that you wouldn't let me be the, the mother the whole time. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I wouldn't let you. I was in charge of that. <laughs> okay, folks, don't don't let Layla fool you. She really is a puppet master. She really yeah, is. I yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I did kind of have a heavy hand in things. I like I like things to be a certain way. But I thought it was such a cool idea because it is a time of change. You know, it's that time when you go from being underground and inside and, and now we're really bursting out, you know? And so I, I loved that idea of change. I want to I want to break out some steps here that we took. Here's a good one. We actually laid out consecrating the circle. Were we that anal back then? We wrote, <laughs> we need to have a second table beside the rose bush so that we can serve it as a place to put our gates and our stuff for the gates. Remember, we would do gates. In the place where we were able to worship, We had a camping field where everybody kind of congregated and we would do pre-ritual events and things there. Then we had this lovely path through the woods along the creek that went to another clearing that was our ritual field that had a bonfire space and a space for drummers. And so we very often would line that path with candles, with torches, decorate it in some way. And create gates. And what gates are is we would create elemental gates, an east air gate, a water gate, you know, fire and earth gates, so that you would pass through each gate and receive a blessing or, you know, something. You'd have to do something to help you embody each of those elements before you ever get to the ritual circle. And to kind of break it down to bare bones, it was like when you were in the camping field, you were kind of in that quote unquote mundane space. And as you walked down the path and through the gates, you were kind of mentally and physically entering that sacred space. And fuck, did it work? It worked. That I that, that place. I miss that so much. Taking the time to walk down that pathway, I can still see it in my head with the different colored tea lights. We'd often put it in plastic cups that got reused over and over again for ritual, but you know, we did it in chakra colors, you know, red, orange, yellow, different green, blue. Cups. Yeah, yep. different color cups to get you down this long, long path. And then, you know, every, you know, 20 feet or so would be another gate or something. It was almost like a physical walking representation of the crystal countdown. And it would definitely get you into a magical mindset. There's no way you could walk down that pathway through those lights, the incense, the candles. Oh, we all also of it. had drummers going too. And drummers going, yeah. people, you know, chanting and offering you blessings as you went through these gates. I mean, you were tripping with magic by the time you got to that right? circle. And uh, I love that. So we had a second table set because we had each gate probably had, you know, some incense or chalice for the water you know, candles for fire. So we had things we needed to set down because we are not basic witches. We are pretty fabulous witches. We had a lot of stuff. Now, speaking of being fabulous, I just want to touch on how we had cast the circle because once I saw it written down, I visually remembered it in my mind and remember how cool it was. You actually walked around the whole circle and kind of dragged a sword with you and created that physical circle, dragging that sword. I love that. One of us did it in the beginning to create it, and one of us did it at the end to open it. Is that the ritual we got the swords for? Yeah. Yeah. You and I got matching freaking warrior goddess swords. Yeah, we we did. did Still still have. have. To kind of circle back to the gates really quick, because we had some freaking fabulous ideas back in the day. For our air gate, people had to walk through incense and ring a bell. Our fire gate, we had people holding candles 
that people would kind of gaze into. At our water gate, we had someone holding a bowl of water that would anoint people's forehead. And at our earth gate, we had someone holding like a really big quartz crystal. Like we had some good ideas. We had bunches of feathers tied to tree branches to symbolize the spirit and consciousness. And we had someone at the end of the gate, which we had as a representation of the fool who would be holding a wicker man. And what we did with this was we had people prior write things down on a piece of paper. And then when they got down the path, we had like a wicker man and they would put their piece of paper into that. Their sacrifices. So in the pre-ritual, in the pre-ritual field, we had people write down things that either wishes they wanted carried or things that they wanted to sacrifice in the fire. And they put those in the wicker man at the end of the path. And then once you went through the gates, when you got to the edge of the circle, we had uh, a couple people there smudging people before they entered. Yeah, so they would smoke cleanse with the with sage or with something like yeah. that as they entered the circle. We were pretty crafty. Yeah. All right. Now we did the blessing of the chalice and the blade. And then we did the great right. Ah, uh, the heroes gamos. Yeah, you want to kind of talk about what those are for folks who don't know? Yes. The Heroes Gamos is the great rite, the sacred rite. And in a lot of Wiccan traditions, usually, this is represented with an athame, which is a knife, and a chalice. And now, depending on your tradition, usually either the woman holds the chalice and the man holds the athame, or the woman holds the athame and the man holds the chalice. And there is a saying that gets said back and forth. Let's see if I can remember it. I have it written down here. Let's see if I get it right. Okay. Let it be known that no woman is greater than a man, nor is man greater than a woman. For what one lacks, the other shall provide. For something, something, we are one in truth. And when conjoined, the two become one in truth. For behold, there is no greater magic in In all all the world world than than that of love. love. Ah, yes. Right. Yeah. So I was close. I was close. I almost had it. Cool. Yeah. So you would say that in alternating lines with the person representing the god and the person representing the goddess. While dropping the athame into said chalice. Right. To represent, obviously, the sex act that Beltane very much represents. New life, sexuality, new beginnings, new starts. I do want to point out that the great right can actually be literal and not with the athame and chalice just putting that out there for all you yep this is the figurative folks. great right symbolic great right uh some covens will do an actual great right and hey you know get your freak on right get go your freak for on. it consenting adults do it do it but yeah so then we did we did the great right and then we called quarters now That is one thing I don't have blast from the past because what I have written down was that we would let people come up with their own. And so everybody kind of came up with their own quarters on the fly that were a part of the actual ritual. So I don't have those written down, but I bet you they were kick ass. No cell phones back then, typically. (laughs) Right. And then we move on to the invocation of the god and goddess, which we did a chant and You know, when we talked about energy raising in that previous episode, I don't know what number that was, but go find it. We talked about different ways to raise energy. We kind of like chants, even though we're tone deaf mofos. Um, (laughs) So the chant we decided to open our invocation was Isis, Astarte, Diana, Hecate, Demeter, Kali, Anana, and then Pan, Osiris, Apollo, Dionysus, Shiva, Odin, Kernunos. I'm not going to sing that, folks. You can't pay me enough to do that. But two really good chants that we had. I mean, we had, what, 250, 275 people chanting yeah. this all at once. Like, that's some magic right there. Those are some pretty common chants. And it, so they're really nice to get people involved because a lot of pagans know them. They're very easy to pick up. And chanting anything simple and repetitive is a great way to raise energy. And then at this point, Layla came into the center of the circle and told a story. And she told the story of Beltane. I don't remember what you said. Do you have any idea? 
don't remember a damn thing. But it was a story. It was a story. I think it was a story about the young goddess and the the green man. I think it was a story about the maiden and the green man and the the marriage of the two, more than likely. Probably something relevant would be something my like guess. That. Then we did the charge of the god in the charge of the goddess, which gotta love them. We did a five-fold kiss. Talk to the people. Tell them what a five-fold kiss is. Did we really fucking do that? It's fucking written down. What do you tell? I I can't change this. The five-fold kiss, again, is a Wiccan thing. And from what I remember... I don't fucking remember. That was 24 years ago, and I'm not as Wiccan as I once was. So (laughs) Exactly. So basically, as you kiss each part of the body, you get uh, a blessing. The feet, the knees, the womb or the phallus the breast or the chest, and the lips. So it goes like this. Blessed be thy feet that have brought thee in these ways. Blessed be thy knees that shall kneel at the sacred altar. Blessed be thy womb or phallus, without which we would not be. Blessed be thy breasts formed in beauty or formed in strength. Blessed be thy lips that shall utter the sacred names. It's all coming back to me now. Sometimes they do. They go straight from the womb to the lips and then go to the third eye. So sometimes it's feet, knees, womb, lips, third eye. So it really depends on what your tradition is. Do what you want, people. Just do what you want. (laughs) So we must have done some type of blessing. I think it was my, at the time, boyfriend, very, very soon after this to be my hand fastie. Husband boy. Husband. We did get hand fasted on Beltane of that same year. So it was right after this ceremony or a week after, I don't know, shortly after we did Beltane. But um, yeah, so I think we did the five-fold kiss, basically kiss each of these five points and say the blessing, uh, and you do it to each other. It's a way for high priests and high priestesses to honor each other and honor the deity within. But very Wiccan. And like Shell said, we are not as Wiccan as we once were. Now, at this point in the ritual, we had our drummer friends start laying down a beat here. We had folks jump the fire, and we talked about that on the last episode about jumping the bail fire. The god and the goddess kind of did a dance, probably some sexy, luring type, it's Beltane dance. A lot of times in our community, there was definitely jumping the fire, which is a traditional Irish blessing where, where you jump for fertility, for luck, to bless yourself, to cleanse yourself. And then usually we would do a scarf dance of some type. Right. And what a scarf dance is, is it's usually started by the god and goddess or the high priest and priestess, and they would each have a scarf. They do a little dancing, and then they would offer an end of that scarf to someone standing in the circle. And then that person would come in, they would dance together, and then you would typically then each have a scarf, and then you would just keep kind of going and bringing people in and dancing. What you're saying is it's a shitty way to force people into the circle and dance that otherwise would not willingly go in there and dance. Oh, me. come on I'm now. Pointing, I'm pointing <laughs> to me. I'm pointing to me. That's true. Most of the time, people are more than excited to get in and dance, especially once people get going. But yeah, it was definitely a way to get people involved, whether they wanted to or not. But that drumming and dancing was basically how we kind of raised energy and built that kind of cone of power, so to say. And we had prior to that given everyone kind of a focal point Mm -hmm. to direct that. And everyone knew that that's what that dancing portion was. We all knew that we were raising energy to power the spell and that intention that we had talked about in the pre-ritual. It wasn't like everyone was just dancing and having a good time. We knew that this was to direct energy to what's called a cone of power, to push that energy out to the universe. In this case, mostly blessings and thanks. Now, we talked about in our last episode how we would pick a May Queen, a May King, And then our community also picked a fool. So during this ritual, this was basically the point where the fool would hand the May King the wicker man. And the May King would throw that wicker man, which, as you remember, everybody put their little slips of paper in with all their things. The king would put the wicker man into the fire that would kind of put everybody's wishes and whatnot out to the universe. Then at that point, we immediately switched to grounding. And what we did was we had a big pot of dirt and we had the May Queen go around the circle 
and give everybody seeds. And then what they would do at that point was ground all that energy into the seeds and yep, put it all in into the, the seed. And then everybody put them in the dirt, which didn't we do something with the dirt afterwards? Yeah, you ended up growing it on your porch. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That, that, I, that, I think yeah, some of right. it got spread out at one coven mate's garden. And I think the rest of it stayed in that pot on your porch. And then this is also a good point to talk about. We chose to leave the circle open and we invited folks to either stay or go. And then it was kind of party time after that. We didn't yep. close that circle, remember? Yes. Until like a day later or two days later? Yep, the next day. Traditionally in our community, Beltane Circle was left up all night. We kept ritual space going all night long. And then the next day, uh, there was usually a ceremony right around noon to close that circle. Like a closing ritual, yep, yeah. A closing ceremony was usually the next day around noon. So we kept that up all night long. And usually Beltane was pretty, pretty wild. The bonfire was going to the wee hours of the morning, the drummers, the dancing. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Now, I don't know if you remember this movie. I want to say it was like early 90s, um, Midsummer Night's Dream. When mm -hmm. I think of Beltane and Litha, I think of that movie. I know Midsummer Night's Dream, it's Litha, but that is Beltane and Litha kind of wrapped into one in my I don't know why, but I associate that movie with with both of these. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that's the Shakespearean play with the with the fairies and everyone going off into the woods to have sex. But, you know, that's pretty much Beltane in a nutshell. It is a time for fairies. It is a time for sex. It's a time for new beginnings and dancing. And and we're all just so freaking excited that winter's over. Finally, we're so happy to get out there and get in the dirt and get camping. Everyone's excited. But our, our final notes on this ritual where we had a, a quote, I don't know where we use this in the ritual, but we are an old people. We are a new people. We are, we the, are the same, same people, people stronger, stronger than, than before. before. That's yep. a chant that I won't chant for you. But our point of this was we're sacrificing the old, planting the new, and we wanted people to celebrate life and renewal and just be just be. Yep. I mean, remember at that point, we had been ramped up half our lives that when the clock went from 99 to 2000, we were just all going to die. And we didn't die in January. And when we were able to camp for the first time in May, we were ready to do Party. it up. Yeah. yeah. It was just a very exciting time. It was the year 2000. How cool is that? Well, and again, because of where we were from and, and living, Beltane was like the first time you could go outside without a winter coat. You could go camping. You could be in the woods. You could walk barefoot on the earth. You know, we had waited almost six months to do that. And so Beltane was just a big deal just because of that to us and where we were from. Yes. We're big believers here, Shell and I, about adapting your rituals and your, your festivals to your place, to where you live. And right. Beltane is traditionally an Irish thing. It's an Irish holiday that celebrates the first of summer. To them, it's the very beginning of summer. To us, it's more like spring has finally really sprung. You know, it, it's it's not summer yet, but there's abundance. You can go outside. Our fault spring is finally over. Here in the Northeast, we're about to have a whole nother frost. I'm getting frost warnings. So you can't even plant until after Beltane here. So we celebrate it as the first flushes of spring. I can collect right. violets and dandelions and, you know, some of the first herbs from my garden. And it's just the beginnings of abundance here. And damn, if that isn't an exciting time. What others are able to do at Ostara, where we're from, we have to wait till Beltane. And I think in a lot of, of the United States, that makes it such a wonderful holiday for all of us because the animals are out, the birds are out. I mean, there's little baby birds and bunnies everywhere. There's flowers everywhere. You can't help but be excited. And Trees are budding. Yeah, everything you want to get your... budding. Everything is budding. You can't... You want to get your hands in the dirt. It ain't brown anymore. It's green. Yeah, it's perfect. Now, you had said before we started recording that in right around that time of 2000, 
one of our coven mates uh, was initiated at that time. We did her yep. initiation into the coven. And also right after we did that Beltane ritual, we did my hand fasting with my husband who we're still together and we'll be celebrating 25 years next year. So although it wasn't Beltane 2000, we actually had a person on our Facebook discussion group ask about this. Two years prior, we had done uh, fertility magic for me to get pregnant on Beltane. Yes. And I wanted to get pregnant. I wanted to have a boy. And well, he's here. He's 26. Woo! Exactly. Um, so it works. So fertility, you know, love, new beginnings, planting what you want to sow down the road. Mm -hmm. Self-love is, is a big one this time of year. And, you know, connecting with yourself, awakening your own inner fire and reflecting on how much you've grown. You know, it's a great time to take stock of yourself and where you're at with, you know, how you feel about you. How well do you like you? <laughs> you know, how are you doing on those goals that you set back on in bulk? And if you look at the year and quarters, that is the government worker in me. You know, this is like the beginning of the second quarter and, you know, shit's about to roll. We've spent January till now waiting for this, at least us Northeast folk. You know, when Christmas is over, all we want is for it to be May when we can leave our house and not have 96 layers of clothes on <laughs> and see life and see growth and see the thing is transforming. It is it's a transformative time of year for sure, because we're going from that everything hidden away and, and gone to everything flourishing and growing. And it's great. You know, it's funny that you said about everything hidden away and, and everything growing, because one thing that I love to do is break out the sandals and go outside and have my little bare toes out and in the ground. So with that being said, another great thing to do on Beltane is to pamper yourself, have a spa day, get a pedicure. Maybe your little winter tootsies aren't quite ready to be shown to everybody on spring and summer. So now is the time to get them all taken care of. Celebrate beauty and sensuality. Get a haircut, get a, haircut, get a massage, buy yourself something beautiful, buy a new bathing suit or, you know, buy something gorgeous that makes you feel pretty, but celebrate yourself. But in a more natural way, Another thing you could do is, I'll give you an example. So Layla talked about relocating and <laughs> yay, I'm going to visit in a week or two. I'm going to see if I can find, I don't know what the hell I'll get because I know nothing about plants. I'm going to see if I can bring you a plant for your new house. No, sh I love plants. I know you do. It's like, you know me. <laughs> they come to me to die, but they come to you for love and affection. So I thought, you know, I'm going to bring Layla a plant to her new place. But God knows what I'll find. Hopefully you'll keep it alive. If you have any suggestions for Shell, DM her at Instagram, back on the broomstick. Listeners, folks, I got I got something that I want to tell you. Layla's been moving. I've been doing some shit. And we've been a little absent on social media. We, we apologize. Have. We know we kind of suck in that area. It's not our strong point, seriously. But we love you. We do love you very much. We're just weirdos. Yeah. So never fear. We will be back on Instagram and Facebook and all the things in like the next little bit. Don't worry. We're back. Don't we're worry. Back. We will be. You know, another thing with Beltane is nothing beats a good flower crown. Maybe that's the princess in me, but tis the season for flower crowns, man. Everybody should wear flower crowns. Men, women, right. whatever, children, all the things. Wear a flower crown. It makes you happy. They're wonderful. Decorate your house with flowers. Pick some dandelions and make dandelion ink sigils on yourself. You know, have a grand old time. Leave some flowers for the fairies. Make a fairy altar outside and leave flowers there for them. Oh my God, there is one more Beltane thing I wanted to touch on. And I actually saw the other day on one of the socials, someone was like, what is that and why do people do it? Before our rituals every year with our big community, one thing we do that is a very important part of Beltane is the Maypole. So can we just talk really quick about what is a Maypole? Why do you do it? What's it mean? Blah, blah, blah. Go. Okay. So the Maypole, I'm pretty sure, is Germanic in tradition. It comes from Walpurgis, which is May Day. All I can think of is when we would chant, put the pole in the hole, put the pole <laughs> in the hole. 
we would have men's and women's mysteries. And I think you can listen to some of our older Beltane episodes if you want to learn more about that. But people would go off and chop down a tree from this land. Other people would go and dig a hole. And basically, guess what that represented? <laughs> in traditional Irish, and again, in, in some Germanic, in lots of different traditions, this maypole represents the phallus and the hole represents the womb or the vagina. Am I allowed to say dick on here? Men, women, sex. It's a dick and it's a pussy. No, we probably right. can't say either of those things, but we got it. Anyway, so it represents life-giving sex and you put them together and then the ribbons around it can indicate all sorts of different things depending on who you ask. It could indicate blood. It could indicate semen. It could indicate colors of the season. You know, it really is going to depend on who you ask. But the, the whole dance is supposed to be a fertility ritual. But we would like everybody grabbed a ribbon and we would kind of dance around in a big circle and like kind of weave in and out of each other to kind of like weave the ribbon. And did we ever make a perfect pattern? I feel like we fucked up that pattern every year. No, it was kind of like a tradition. You know how people who do cord cuttings like interpret how the wax melts? Yeah. We would interpret how the year was going to go based on how the weaving looked. Was it good? Was it chaotic? Was it lopsided? We would kind of jokingly say how the community's year was going to go was how the weaving went on the maypole. And no, we never did get it perfectly. <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing it. We did. And I, I remember the May King and the May Queen when the weave got down. Didn't we like bind them to the maypole or some shit? The tradition was that the May King was bound to the maypole while everybody danced around and wove him up to the maypole. And the May Queen, everyone had different colored ribbons and the May Queen had a white ribbon. And whereas everyone was supposed to dance in a specific pattern, the May Queen represented chaos and she could dance any way she wanted to and weave in and out however she chose. But in the end, the May King was supposed to be tied to the pole and not ritualistically sacrificed, but um, what do you say when it's fake? Like um, symbolically sacrificed along with the pole. So it's a big fertility dance, which always makes me kind of giggle when I see little kids doing it outside of churches on May Day. <laughs> But, you know, hey. Well, we needed you to give perspective because as we pointed out last year, you've been May Queen and I never have. <laughs> yeah, well, you've been community staff holder and I never have. So there. Like three times. Yeah, exactly. So see, I think that's fair. So we also very quickly before we go, we do have a spell and a meditation that we will put up on the website for you guys. And we will definitely get to it this time. I promise a spell that you can do. I call this the Beltane Wishes spell. All you need are some seeds, wildflower, any type of seeds you like, a small piece of paper. If you have tissue paper, recycled paper, even better. And basically all you're going to do is get yourself into magical space and think of an intention, something that you want to grow. And you're going to write that on the piece of paper. And then you're going to put your seeds at the center of the paper and fold it over, you know, like you're going to close the seeds in like it's an envelope and then charge that little envelope of seeds. Just do a chant, direct your energy into it, however you want to charge that packet, and then bury it in your garden and water it. And then just every time you go out and water where you've buried that little packet, just concentrate on your intention. And as those seeds grow, once they bloom, so should your spell, and you should see results. Simple enough? Yeah, it's simple enough when things don't come to you to die. When you're like me... <laughs> Cats and kids, man. That's it. Cats and kids. That's true. If you are a plant killing witch like Shell, maybe that's not the spell for you. But I'll put that and also a, a meditation, a self-love meditation up on our website if you want to take a look at that back on the broomstick.com. Happy Beltane. Happy Beltane, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. We appreciate your likes, your stars. Leave a comment, a review. It really helps the show out and it makes Shell and I giggle like little kids. It really does. Yeah, it makes our whole day. So thank you very much and keep them coming. We appreciate it. So thank you all for joining us. We will see you next week. And as always, be wise, be wicked. And keep it witchy.